Okay, can I talk a little bit about Arnold's first point in his lecture, which he talks about um, tensor notation. So I just want to go over that. If I first consider a plane, and this is going to be my X plane. The normal for that on this plane, I can imagine there being a force that's uh, normal to this plane. Now I could imagine a force to be going, let's say, in the, I'll call this the y direction. So a force going in this direction. So if we've got a certain area for this plane, we could say that there's a stress that's going off. We know that the force is perpendicular to the area, so that's going to be a shear stress. So since we're working in three dimensions, we could have a shear stress going off in that direction, or we could have a shear stress come in out towards us. We labeled those directions correctly so you would want to use that uh, this is going to be our near side plane so we're going to say that uh, for this we will apply a right hand rule. So my first finger will be the first vector so that's the x direction. Second finger will be the y direction so that's going up and the thumb will be the z direction so that's coming out. So I can now label this up as um, uh, forces, although since we're doing force divided by area, we'll do it in terms of stresses. So the first force that we've got is coming off in the x direction. We are on the x plane, so I'm going to tell you that we're on the x plane and we're going, I've got a force here, or stress rather, going that's normal to the x plane. Here we've got a stress that's on the x-plane and it's going off in the y direction and here we've got a stress that's on the x-plane and it's going in the z direction so for convenience uh, I've got a lot of x, y, z, x, x's and all this going on so uh, a lot of the time I will refer to my normal stress so that's like my direct stress I'll call that x, x and I um, often refer to that as simply a stress in x direction. Shear stress, yeah, we've come across this before, what symbol do we normally use for shear stress? And um, we normally use tau, so tau xy. So this is for my near side plane. Now imagine we're now going to do this for every plane face. So we've got the X, the Y, and the Z, that's near side. And then we've got the X, the Y, and the Z, that's far side. So that, in principle, looks like we've got 3 times 6, 18 different forces acting on that stress cube. But this is a stress cube that we have uh, deformed, maybe bent it or squashed it and now we're looking inside the body and looking at the stress cube so if I'm looking at that, that little stress cube there after I've done the deformation and I'm, and I'm in a static state that cube's not moving you know, so you've got you to gotta appreciate this is the stress state after we've applied the loading or the bending or wherever it might be so if it's applied after, that cube is not moving. So if I look at, for example, the force going off in the x direction, now if I look at the far side, and I'm going to define this as x pointing away. Now, near side, I use right hand rule and the far side I imagine everything's going to be the mirror image of so I'm going to use left hand rule on the far side so the X is first finger pointing away in this direction here so this stress on the far side has to equal this stress on the near side because this cube is not moving in the X direction and then if you apply your left hand rule 
um, for, for example, where Y is pointing, um, and everything's going to be sort of uh, mirrored, but it's be mirrored through the, uh, the center, as it were. It's not like a, a straight mirror image. So everything's kind of been, um, been refocused through the middle. So an image here is getting refocused through this sort of center of that cube. So the sigma xy on the near side is pointing off in this direction and the sigma using the left hand is going to be pointing off in this direction opposite. So again I expect that uh, sigma xx equals sigma xx near and far and also sigma xy equals sigma xy near and far. So every term that I could look at, um, the near side and the far side are going to be a rotated, uh, reflected, um, if you like, um, uh, value. And so they're going to have the same value. So I don't need 18 terms, I only need 9. I only need my, the values I've got on the near side. So my notation that I've used is that the first index is the plane and the second index is the direction. So I should warn you this is tends to be what engineers use. Pure maths people and, um, and physicists um, kind of usually, not usually, sometimes they you might find that these um, indices notations have been reversed. Um, and that's done, I think, because uh, in particular in pure maths, they tend to look at things beyond three dimensions. So, uh, so then the uh, it makes sense that your your most right index is referring to the plane. But for us, in terms of engineering, and most of the engineering textbooks you'll kind of come across, you'll find the first index is referring to the plane and the second index is referring to the direction of the stress okay and i think that's about it really just i uh, just wanted to go over the notation for that bit